All right, so um, today uh, you will be watching a video covering the topic of meiosis. And the essential question I want you to write down in your notes today is can you summarize the events of meiosis? Now before we begin talking, we need to review um, human chromosomes. Remembering that our DNA in eukaryotes are located in the nucleus and we have this long DNA strand that's long and long and long. And before we uh, begin to go through um, cell division and that kind of stuff, it packages into these um, structures called chromosomes. Now remember we've been talking about patterns of inheritance and passing down our traits from parent to offspring. And so we have been talking about these uh, structures called genes. And so genes are pieces of DNA that um, code for a specific trait. So co code for eye color, code for rolling your tongue, um, that kind of thing. And so we need to remember that when we're looking at human chromosomes, we call them homologous chromosomes. And remember, homo is a root word. You need to know which means the same. And so you will have homologous chromosomes when we're talking about this topic of meiosis today. And so homologous is referring to where you have one chromosome from your father and one chromosome from your mother, and they match up. They are the same. So let's say that this gene codes for rolling of the tongue. So that's for this allele for rolling your tongue that you got from your father. And then this gene is the uh, second allele that codes for rolling your tongue that you would have gotten from your mother. So we call them homologous chromosomes. Now we need to come back to some vocabulary that we learned at the beginning of the unit. The words gametes and somatic cells. So remember gametes are referring to our sex cells, our sperm and our egg. And our somatic cells are referring to all the other different cells in our body. Muscle cells, skin cells, uh, bone marrow cells, that kind of thing. And so when we're referring to those somatic cells, all those other types of cells in our body, we refer to them as diploid. So di is a root word you need to know, and di is referring to two. So in diploid cells or somatic cells, they have a full complete set of chromosomes, which means they have the two complete sets, the full amount of DNA in all of those cells. And so we represent diploid with um, uh, this number 2n. And so in humans, we are 2n equals a total of 46 chromosomes. So all of our somatic cells, we would be called diploid, and they would have 46 chromosomes in there. Now in gametes, um, our sex cells, those are called haploid, meaning they would have half the amount, which means they would only have one set they wouldn't have the complete full set of chromosomes in all of their genes. And so they would have just one set of genes. And so we call um, haploid or gamete cells N in humans would equal 23 because you'd have half the amount. So you'd only have 23 chromosomes in sperm and 23 chromosomes in eggs. All right, so here's another visual showing you that you would get uh, a chromosome from your mom, a chromosome from your dad, and this would be a, a diploid set which would be these the ones that are in your somatic cells and then in sperm and egg you would have half the amount present. Okay, so we're talking about this process of meiosis and meiosis is a process where you're taking your total number of chromosomes and you're cutting them by half. So basically you're taking a diploid cell and, and at the end of the process forming four haploid cells. And so basically meiosis is making our gametes. Meiosis is the process of making our eggs and our sperm cells. All right, so there are some important to meiosis. The one is, is that it's random fertilization that can occur, so it's random. Um, there is genetic variation because there's this process called crossing over, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And there's also bringing back one of Mendel's principles, which was independent assortment where the alleles will separate independently of each other when you're forming these gametes. And that's the process of meiosis is forming these gametes. So before we get into meiosis at all, we have to talk about one important thing, and that is um, DNA must be replicated. And remember that replication happens in S phase in interphase. So I have a visual here showing you that you have your mom's chromosome, and you have your dad's chromosome, and they're homologous to each other. 
and then they have to be replicated. So you they would so moms would form uh, a sister chromatid and dads would form sister chromatids. And again, they're just duplicated homologous chromosomes. So remember that in somatic cells we have 46 chromosomes. So if you duplicate, you're going to end up with now 92 chromosomes before beginning meiosis. All right. So in prophase 1, that is the first step of meiosis, is prophase 1. You're going to notice that as we go through this, it's very, very similar to um, mitosis, which we talked about in, in Unit 7. So in prophase 1, the duplicated homologous chromosomes, they um, pair on top of each other, and they form something called a tetrad. And this process is called crossing over, where the two homologous pairs uh, cross over with each other and so I kind of show you right here this visual where you have your moms and you have your dads and they form a tetrad and they cross over and you notice that they kind of switch some genes around so now they don't look the same. Now this is the most important reason of why we are so genetically different is this process right here of crossing over of switching the genes around um, in prophase one. Now I want you to pause this video and I want you to draw a picture of a cell and what it would look like in prophase one. Okay, so in metaphase one would be the second stage, the next stage in um, meiosis. Okay, and what happens is similar to metaphase in mitosis, we mean meta. Meta is a root that means middle. The homologous chromosomes, uh, those duplicated homologous chromosomes, will now move into the middle of the cell. And so uh, they would be paired up next to the um, ones that they match with, the homo homologous, and they would move into the middle. And again, the spindle fibers would come out of the centrioles and begin to attach to the centromeres uh, that are holding those chromosomes together. So pause this video and draw a picture of what metaphase one would look like. The third stage of meiosis is anaphase one. And in anaphase one, I still want you to remember of that uh, word anaphase meaning away. So the spindle fibers are going to pull the homologous pairs on opposite ends. And so it's not going to just be this one chromosome anymore being pulled away this way and one pulled away this way. That's what meiosis is. It's not like that. The whole homologous chromosome is being pulled to this side and this whole homologous chromosome is being pulled to this side. So I want you to pause the video and draw a picture of anaphase 1 in your notes. All right, the fourth stage of meiosis is telophase. One and tela, remember, uh, represents the um, word two. And so, what begins to happen is a nuclear envelope begins to form around the homologous chromosomes, and you're getting and you're beginning to see um, two. And then, what would happen is cytokinesis would happen, and you would actually see two cells. So, I want you to pause the video and draw a picture of what's happening in telophase one. Now, we're not finished. Meiosis is not finished. We're now going into a second stage of meiosis. So it's kind of like you have meiosis 1 and then you have meiosis 2. And so we're going to go into the next part, which is now called prophase 2. And so what you're now going to see is prophase happening in two cells. And so the nuclear envelope begins to break down again. Uh, the spindle fibers begin to come out of the centrioles and um, they begin to stay condensed still and you still see chromosomes. However, no tetrads are formed and no crossing over happens. That only happens in prophase one. So I want you to pause the video and draw a picture of two cells going through prophase two in your notes. Okay, so then again, after prophase two, it will become metaphase two. Remember, meta meaning middle, okay? And so what happens is the chromosomes are moving to the middle of the cell. So you see two cells here where the chromosomes are again lining up in the middle and the spindle fibers are coming out and attaching to the centromeres on those chromosomes. So pause the video and draw metaphase two in your notes. 
All right, now in anaphase two, again, the chromosomes begin to move away from each other. And now this is where the sister chromatids are now separating from each other in both cells. So this chromatid is moving away from this chromatid and they're now going on either poles, similar to like what we have seen in meiosis before. So draw um, these two cells and going through anaphase two in your notes. All right, so telophase two and cytokinesis, what you see happening is now that they have divided, both cells have divided, you now will have four haploid daughter cells. Four haploid daughter cells. So they will have half the amount of chromosomes present. And I think you need to pause the video and draw a picture showing the four haploid cells. Now, so let's just kind of wrap up the process of meiosis. What happens is four haploid cells have uh, been created at the end of meiosis. You started with one cell, which was be your diploid, and you ended up with four haploid cells. Four haploid cells. And so um, there's these two kind of terms that I want you to kind of to remember, and one is spermodegenesis, and that is referring to the creation of four sperm cells. And there's oogenesis, and remember this is a root word, oo, okay, remembering egg, and that's a process of creating four egg cells. But um, unfortunately in this process, only one egg is actually viable um, when you're looking at females. And so I'll show you a visual of, of the two. So this is the diploid cell going through meiosis one, going through meiosis two, and you now have made your four potential haploid sperm cells that can go be used to fertilize an egg. Over here in eugenesis, you have your um, diploid cell. It goes through meiosis one, it goes through meiosis two. What happens is you really only get one mature egg that has the um, haploid number in it. All right, so I want you to go to my video form that's located on my class webpage, and I want you to answer these two questions. The first question is, what is the level of organization going from smallest to biggest in this list? So there's nucleus, gene, DNA, chromosome, and I want you to put them in order from smallest to biggest. Question two, I want you to think back to unit seven when we talked about cell division and we talked about the process of mitosis. Now that you have a quick overview of meiosis, I want you to compare and contrast both these processes. What are the similarities and differences between mitosis and meiosis? Please go and fill out the form and I'll be checking those notes tomorrow. Thank you.